Hi, this is Dr. Wayne Weil. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at Orthopedic Specialists of Seattle. Welcome to our video blog. Today we're going to be talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome it refers to the complex of symptoms and signs brought on by compression of the median nerve in the hand and the wrist. Symptoms commonly are pain, numbness and tingling in the thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger. Patients oftentimes have increased symptoms at night, which can cause difficulties with sleep and waking up in the middle of the night having to shake out their hands because of numbness and tingling. Oftentimes these symptoms uh, can be caused by different environmental exposures, such as work activities, repetitive motion activities, prolonged typing on a computer, vibratory activities, and also different medical conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis or trauma and different medications. I'd like to talk a little bit about the anatomy of uh, the carpal tunnel. The, inside the carpal tunnel, there are the median nerve, as well as the nine flexor tendons to the fingers. Over time, what can happen is the pressures in the carpal tunnel can be increased, and this decreases the blood flow to the median nerve, which can cause the symptoms of numbness, tingling, and pain. Some of the increase in the pressures can be due to fluid accumulations, such as are common in pregnancy, or to the previously described uh, environmental exposures. Carpal tunnel syndrome is more common in women and in people who have diabetes and obesity, and it is thought that, at least in women, that part of this is due to the biomechanics of just having a smaller tunnel for these 10 structures to ride through, as opposed to in men where the tunnels might be a little bit bigger and so the pressures would be a little bit smaller. Common treatments for carpal tunnel um, in the early stages are wearing wrist braces at night and also taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen or Aleve. And these, in mild cases, can oftentimes be very helpful. If uh, these conservative treatments aren't effective, then oftentimes we will uh, treat carpal tunnel syndrome with uh, steroid injections. And then ultimately, if conservative management does not help uh, with the symptoms, then surgical management uh, can be very beneficial. The diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome is often a clinical uh, diagnosis in that uh, we would take your history and a history of numbness and tingling in the thumb, the index, and the middle finger, as well as difficulties at night with sleep, oftentimes uh, correlate very well with the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. In the office as well, we'll do a specific examination uh, which would uh, also help us in diagnosing uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Also, uh, studies such as x-rays to rule out any abnormalities in the wrist can sometimes be helpful. And as well, oftentimes we will order electrical tests to measure the speed at which electricity runs up and down the median nerve at the wrist. And if those speeds are slowed down, then uh, oftentimes we can make the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. When treatment uh, for carpal tunnel syndrome fails in terms of conservative management, whether it's bracing at night, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, or carpal tunnel steroid injections, then the treatment uh, moves to a surgical management. Here at Orthopedic Specialists of Seattle, and in my practice specifically, I perform what's called an endoscopic carpal tunnel release. And with an endoscopic carpal tunnel release, through a one centimeter incision in the wrist crease, um, we can insert a camera inside the carpal tunnel and decompress the median nerve and the carpal tunnel from the inside out. 
The big advantage uh, of this procedure is that it is a minimally invasive procedure and that studies have demonstrated in head-to-head -head comparisons of endoscopic carpal tunnel releases versus the more traditional open carpal tunnel release that patients have less pain, quicker return to work, and better grip strength in the one month, three month, and six month follow-ups. The endoscopic technique as well is a very safe technique. We can visualize your nerve during the procedure and nerve injury is extremely rare in using an endoscopic uh, technique. Published data has demonstrated that the risks of endoscopic carpal tunnel release are similar to those for an open carpal tunnel release in terms of potential nerve injury. In my practice, after an endoscopic carpal tunnel release, my post-operative protocol is relatively simple. I allow patients to return back to light office type work within a couple of days and manual labor such as construction type work in a couple of weeks. Really the recovery is uh, patient dependent and I tell my patients classic orthopedic advice. If it hurts, maybe lay off from doing it for a while, but generally people experience complete relief of their symptoms in terms of the nighttime act uh, numbness and tingling pretty much the night after surgery and experience soreness in the palm of their hand for the first couple of weeks, but really are generally not significantly inhibited in terms of being able to perform activities of daily living. Uh, generally, uh, post-operatively, I don't uh, prescribe physical therapy. I find that most of my patients get back to doing their normal things pretty quickly. And generally, I tell people that life will be your physical therapy and that just resuming normal activities will exercise your hands uh, enough and that you will generally not need physical therapy after an endoscopic carpal tunnel release.